This morning we are celebrating a holiday, a feast day, within a particular season, and that is we are in the middle of Easter time, we are still celebrating Easter for 40 days until the Ascension, but today we have what is known as Good Shepherd Sunday. Usually Good Shepherd Sunday happens uh, for the new calendar next week, but on our particular calendar we celebrate it on that second Sunday after Easter. And it's a wonderful day, using an image for something which most of us as modern Americans have no idea what it means. After all, I don't know about you, but I have had a whole lot of contact in my life with shepherds. Now, I have to say, however, that the last week or so, I have been kind of waxing nostalgic because my son Sam, who's out there ushering, turns 18 tomorrow. And I, I just can't imagine that. And one of the movies that we enjoyed watching when he and Andrew were little was a movie called Babe. I don't know if you remember this. It's a cute movie set in Scotland where a farm family buys a little pig and the pig thinks he's a sheepdog. So much so that he hangs around with the sheepdogs and learns how to shepherd sheep. The problem is, of course, is that the dogs and the sheep don't like each other. The dogs tell the pig that sheep are stupid, and the sheep tell the pig that dogs are mean. And they have this very odd interrelationship. All of them, however, really kind of like the farmer, the man who owns the flock. Well, throughout the strangeness of the story, I'm not going to give away the whole thing to you. Through the strangeness of the story, the pig ends up entered in a competition to be a sheep dog. And the problem is, is that the only reason why the sheep on the farm listen to the pig is because it's a combination of they like him and they feel sorry for him. But in this competition, the farmers are going to look absolutely ridiculous because strange sheep are not going to be afraid of the pig. And so, they give the pig the secret password. Apparently, if you're a sheep, in order to gain each other's respect, you have to use the secret password, which is FarmMapU. I don't know, but anyway, don't <laughs> So the sheep goes, the pig goes, and is able to gain the confidence of these strange sheep because he knows the password. Now, that actually, in some ways, has helped me in my theology about the Good Shepherd. Brace yourself. Because there are two ways that groups can be led. They can be led through fear, which is what the sheep dog do. They run around and they bark at the sheep and they direct them and they scare them. As a matter of fact, the sheep think that the sheep dogs are wolves and so they're afraid of them. On the other hand, they are willing to follow the farmer and they are willing to follow the pig because they like him. They have a relationship and they think they're okay. This morning we hear about Jesus being the good shepherd. And there are plenty of people who follow Jesus out of fear. They are afraid of hell, and you should be afraid of hell. Hell is a place you do not want to go. But that sort of relationship is not one that is positive, helpful, joyful, and not one that will build you up into the person God wants you. Rather, we want you to have that relationship with a good shepherd because we are good sheep. We want to have a relationship with the good shepherd because we trust him. We know him. Today's gospel lesson, in fact, says, Jesus says, that he's a good shepherd and his sheep hear his voice. They know his voice, and they listen to him. So we as good sheep must learn the shepherd's voice. How do we do that? Well, there's a lot of easy ways. First of all, we are to be in a relationship with him. We are in a relationship with the living God by trusting him, by being in a life of prayer and communication with him. And of course, we will recognize his voice if we recognize what he says to us. And the way we do that, of course, is by hearing what he has said before, knowing our scriptures. We become good sheep by knowing the shepherd's voice and knowing what it is that 
that he says to us. What is interesting in watching shepherds I have seen, both on television and from Bishop Keith Ackerman, my bishop protector, who in fact is my shepherd, he ordained me. See, he points out that many shepherds are able to take a small flock and lead them, not from the front, but from the back, with just voice commands. They recognize the shepherd's voice, and he is able to drive them through a city from one side to the other to take them to a new pasture. He's able to do it with voice commands, whistles, because they recognize him and they trust him. Of course, it's also nice to have that big spiral stick, I suppose, if one gets out of line. That helps. That's why the bishop has that big stick, by the way, because he's a shepherd. And I think it's probably harder to shepherd clergy than sheep. Probably easier to shepherd cats than it would a clergy. But part of that relationship for us as good sheep is that we must know that we can trust the shepherd. It is our contention that we should stay in one place Eat all the food there because it's good right now. And not be bothered with having to be moved. And yet the shepherd is always moving his flock from one place to another. We heard during the Psalms that he leads us to green pastures. Well, there's actually technical reasons for that. You know, in the history of the West, you know the cattle ranchers hated the sheep farms. Because sheep eat the grass all the way down to the roots. So you have to move them along before they destroy the grass. But more importantly, the shepherd is moving the sheep because he knows it is better for them to eat on the better grass. And of course he does so to protect, to protect the sheep. Jesus says the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. We know that Jesus has in fact laid down his life for our sheep. And so we must learn to trust the good shepherd so that we can be good sheep. We must trust that even if changes are hard for us personally, if they are called to us by God, then what it is on the other side, the new pasture, will in fact be better. The good shepherd has called us and leads us and guides us and we hear his voice and we recognize it so that we can be protected, we can be guided, and we can be brought safely home as we heard in this last hymn. The good shepherd ultimately will lead us home to himself. Far man you. Okay, maybe it's not really the password. How about Jesus loves you? That's a great password. Because he does. Because he's a good shepherd. So let us by grace be very good sheep. In the name of the